Well, what's with all those ducks on all those Jeeps? Now, maybe you have a Jeep and you come out and you've seen a rubber duck on your mirror, on your hood, or maybe you're a ducker. Maybe you keep a bag of rubber ducks with you and whenever you see a nice Jeep, you throw one on the hood. Well, where did all that begin? How did all of that start? That's what we're going to find out today because we're talking with Allison Parliament, the founder of Duck Duck Jeep, or as she's uh, more affectionately known as the Mother Ducker. Now, if you've been ducked, if you're a ducker, uh, or if you're just a Jeep fan and you just love off-roading, uh, be sure to like this video and then subscribe to our Automoblog YouTube channel. And for your daily dose of automotive medicine, give us a follow on Twitter at Automoblog. Allison, oh, welcome to our Automoblog YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me today. Now, Allison, before Duck Duck Jeep was a thing, your roots as a Jeep girl go way back, you know, to your family. So tell us about how you got into the Jeep life all those years ago. Um, I have been a Jeep girl since birth, basically. Um, my great uncle Greg restored antique military Jeeps and yeah. antique vehicles. And um, we were very, very fortunate that he loved little kids. So he would take us out in the Jeeps any chance he got. We would off-road on family property. He had over a thousand acres that we roamed on and um, into town for little trips, even to the beach at times. Any chance he had to have us in the Jeeps, he was kind enough to say, come on, let's go. And we'd all run and pile in the Jeep, my cousin Jade, my brothers and I. So. Right. We were very fortunate with that, and it's just continued into a lifelong love. I ended up with a um, 2006 Jeep Liberty while I was in university, mm -hmm. and I was so proud of my first Jeep. I was a broke college student, but I had a Jeep, <laughs> 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 and it, it turned into what we have now with the 2018 uh, JK that I have now. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll talk about Canabama. That is your beloved Jeep. Yep. I'm going to leave a link below uh, that will take you to Automoblog to a more comprehensive article, uh, a full article on Duck Duck Jeep. Allison, that was when I first met you when we did an interview for that article. Um, so kind of going back now. So, so that's you as, as a young kid getting into the Jeep life with your family. So moving up the timeline a little bit right before COVID, you're down in Alabama. You've decided to go back to Canada. So tell us about that part in your life. Um, I came up just due to medical stuff and my family being up yeah. here. Half my, well, most of my family is here in Ontario and many of our loved ones. And then my mom and dad, my brothers are down in Alabama and Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So okay. When they called to close the borders, we were going to be cut off from everybody. And we didn't know for how long mm -hmm. or what the rules might be to be able to get in and out despite our citizenship here in Canada. Right. So I made the decision to come home, kind of ignoring some of the things that we were hearing about, you know, people having problems coming up with American plagues, people getting called in and reported to the police or harassed because they had American plates. I never, ever thought I'd have an issue because, you know, Canadians are nice. That's what we're known for. Yes. And well, unfortunately, that wasn't the case the day I decided to come home. So, and you were almost home. You were nearly home. And then you stop at a gas station out of the blue. You have this horrible incident. I'm, you know, tell us about, t take us back to that day and, and, and what happened because that is important to the duck, duck Jeep story. Oh, for sure. Um, I actually had been driving up from Alabama. It's at that point where I stopped was Woodstock, Ontario. It's about 13 hours, 14 hours mm -hmm. on the road for me at that point. I had stopped in at my uncle's, but I needed gas. And I was like, well, you know, I'll stop the on route. It's kind of like a rest stop and a restaurant and a gas station all in one. Sure. Usually pretty safe. And um, I got out to stretch and I heard somebody yell something, but I kind of wrote it off. You, know, you hear things. Right. And um, the next thing I knew, I had a guy yelling at me, telling me I wasn't welcome, swearing at me, telling me to get out, shoving me into my Jeep. And it was kind of scary. Like, I mean, yeah. considering I was from here, I never thought I'd have a problem. But right. some people felt differently because A, they don't know. They just see the plate and assume. And B, there were a lot of heavy, hard feelings about COVID and people spreading it because the media was saying people were sneaking into Canada and, mm -hmm. you know, going to Banff and doing this, that, and the other things. So Canadians were a little on edge. 
and he grabbed you, didn't he? After after yep. he yelled at you, he actually physically grabbed you, right? Yeah. Yeah, he put his hands on me and forced me back into my Jeep. It was pretty scary. Mm. And that that brought up, you know, obviously that's scary event in and of itself, but it brought up a lot of bad memories for you because this is this is not the first time you've dealt with this. And when you were younger, you 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 had a stalker, which we talk about in in the article. So after you're attacked, you know, it takes you a long time before you can really feel comfortable going back out again. In fact, you didn't even drive in your Jeep at all. So you've got all of these bad memories now coming to the surface. You just got attacked coming back home to be with your family. So tell us kind of how you were feeling and, and, and what was that like? Um, it was kind of rough. I was afraid to go out in the Jeep because, you know, mm-hmm. we had the American plates and I didn't know how people up here would feel. I, you know, didn't know how people would interact and, you know, the few times we had been out over that summer, even after I calmed down, people would pull up beside us and roll up their windows, glaring at us from their vehicles. It was a different feel. Yeah. And I had been here for enough time that it didn't matter either way, but it, it was really uncomfortable. We actually borrowed Peter's dad's car a couple times to go into town the first two weeks I was here because, um... I was really uncomfortable that something might happen again or we'd have a problem just because people were feeling the way they were feeling. Right, right. And Peter is your dearest friend in, in the whole mm-hmm. world. So uh, tell us a little bit about Peter because he, he plays an important role in the story too. Um, Peter is one of <laughs> the best people I know. Yeah. He keeps me out of trouble more often than not, but sure. we've known each other for probably 12, 13 years now. And, okay. um, we tend to read a lot of the same books and are into a lot of the same things. And he tends to be down for whatever adventure I suggest, which is probably not always a good thing, but <laughs> it helps with off-roading. Sure. We've had a lot of entertaining adventures, but he um, is usually down for anything. He actually goes by Ducking Ninja when we're out. Really? Because he never gets caught. I always get caught when we play <laughs> yes, Duck on the Jeep. And but... we'll get to that in a second. Yes, you did. <laughs> so, so it's Peter that finally says, Allison, you got to get out of the house. Let's do some shopping. And you think, okay, well, because Peter's my best friend, I, I got to figure out a way to bug him with something. So I'm going to get these this bag of rubber ducks and I'm going to leave them all over the house. And this goes into the, this is the day that you duck the very first Jeep. So Peter gets mm-hmm. you out of the house. You buy this bag of rubber ducks. You walk out of Stedman's. Uh, boom, there's this incredible Jeep. Take us through what happened that first day. Um, we had been in Stedman's. I actually made my cousin Jade pay for the ducks because I didn't want to get caught with them because, you know, we were trying to be sneaky about it totally. for Peter. But um, <laughs> I had a brilliant idea when we walked there. I was like, you know what? We could probably make somebody else laugh and, you yeah. know, do something fun with it. So the Jeep that was sitting in front of me was gorgeous and I was excited and I have a tendency to carry Sharpies on me like everywhere, like no joke, they're all over the place. But, um, (laughs) (laughs) so I rode on the duck, nice Jeep, hope that, you know, it makes you smile and we put it on the Jeep and we kind of got caught and it was, you know, a thing. there's a conversation about social media and how this was pretty cool and a great idea. And, um, we ducked a few more Jeeps around Bancroft that day and then kind of went and did our own thing. And while Peter and Jade and I were having lunch, we were talking about it. We were laughing because I figured this would die off in a few days, but oh, right. I was wrong. But, um, Jade was like, what happens if this goes viral? I was like, yeah, no, I never thought that could happen. And well, it did. And um, then it did. <laughs> and then it did. And, and if I remember right, when the guy caught you, he, he must've been watching you put this duck on his cheek the whole yeah. time. He loved it. He was thrilled. He was like, he made his he day. Was. It did. And as um, soon as we had the social media up on Instagram and Facebook, mm-hmm. he was one of the first people to join. Yeah. yeah. And apparently he had, and I, he, I've had conversations with him since then, but he sure. went to Stedman's and bought the other bag of ducks that they had and started doing it too. <laughs> That's fantastic. So. It, it was, it was a light, fun way to feel safe again. Yeah. So it goes viral and it just takes off like wildfire. You're in like 50 some countries now today. Mm-hmm. What was that like, Allison, to have it just blow up? It was really overwhelming. 
Like I am usually pretty quiet, quiet and shy, and I like to hide with books. That, that's kind of my happy place if we're not off-roading, but I'm still overwhelmed and in awe of people today. Like the stories that we hear, the people that reach out and just another country getting marked off. We had a Ducker join from Italy two days ago. Right. And you just see these stories and these people and you sit awestruck of just how one simple duck like this, you know, yes. changed the world. It did. It really did. And like I have ducks from a bunch of countries. Actually, I can show you right now. Yeah, um, please. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Let's 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 show these. Yes, we'll start with this one because this was our first country that joined us was Australia. It was um, Australia. This duck came from Sydney and its tag is still intact and everything. Oh, um, and the lady that sent me this actually has ducked up Jeep Australia, which is pretty cool. So we have That's a cool. sister group in Australia, but this one came from Holland and it's actually from the company Delft. Okay. That does yes. the um, China, Fine China. They actually released these guys over the summer. And my cousin who's living there sent that to me. I like that one. I like that one a lot. That's cool. I have the Day of the Dead duck, the Mexico duck. Right. She's right. Pretty cool. Um, I was going to say these guys this came from Germany. One of my cousins is posted in Europe right now with the military. So, so I get ducks. Right. I had a white chocolate duck as well that arrived with these guys. But didn't really? survive. <laughs> Um, I love it. I have one from New York. Of course. Pretty cool. Yeah, of course. We've got the kayaking duck. Yes. Every duck is unique. Um, This was actually the first duck I bought, Peter, for the R tags, because R tags are a little different than everybody else's. Right, right. And then I have um, the Jeep ducks that we actually duck with. They have rainbow butts. They're kind of neat. And I also, um, for, you know, charity and helping other people out, I crochet these guys. Yes. And you are awesome at this, Allison. You've, over the last couple of weeks, you've been sending me texts, photos of, of yep. what you've been doing. So you're, you're very good at that. I, I'm always we, impressed. And you have a lot that you do. You always have a pile of them. <laughs> I have about a hundred of them right now. We yeah. sent some out to their new homes and we have more going out soon, but um, we have where you can purchase 10 for $30 and they come already tagged. Right. So you can just start ducking with them. Yeah. Because everybody likes to have, you know, something different. I also have one other duck that's kind of special. He's the EOD bomb duck. Yes. Um, okay. Santos Lopez, who is the vice president of marketing for the Orange County Choppers. Mm-hmm. And I became friends last summer and he invited me down to the roadhouse opening as actually part of the Jeep stuff. Yeah. And he ducked me with this guy. I love it. And he is absolutely huge compared to like most ducks, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> and there is no wrong way to duck. I mean, it can be just a basic yep. yellow rubber duck, or it can be more of a customized rubber duck, like what you're exactly. showing right here. And I have simple rubber ducks. I have mm-hmm. different ducks and I have fun just putting them out when I'm out and about. I don't always tag mine because people tend to get a little overwhelming sometimes <laughs> when they <laughs> right. realize. Right. But, um, I have little ducks that are like this big. I have ducks all the way up to the size of the EOD duck. So it's one of those things where it's for everybody in the Jeep community. And you have a pool inflatable duck too that I've seen. That's really funny. Yeah. (laughs) I think, I think we sent you the video of us sledding down. (laughs) Yeah. We had a lot of fun that day. Um, But I also, that duck lives on my Jeep when we go to a duck duck Jeep invasion. So Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always sitting up on the on, on the top of 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 Canabama. Speaking of Canabama, yep. that is your baby. Tell us about Canabama. Yes. <laughs> um, she's a 2018 JK Sahara. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought her June of 2020. Okay. Um, I had met some goals at work, and I could finally get what I wanted. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because I got it, and my aunt's car died, so she inherited my Kia Soul. Um, <laughs> right. It Good was the trade. greatest. Greatest excuse to buy a Jeep, right? Yeah, right. Um, so I, I, I talked myself into doing it. Angie needs a car. This one's paid for. Let me go buy another one. Perfect. Um, but it ended up being the best thing I ever did. Um, we have duck decals all over her. She's got ducky door inserts, um, mm-hmm. ducky air valve covers. Um, mm-hmm. I have a sticker on the dashboard that says, but did you die? Correct. Right. Yes. Um, I love that one. There's, there's a fun story with that one from off-roading. Because we cracked the um, underplate that's on the bottom of the Wranglers first right. time out. 
we hit a piece of Canadian shield and it, oh yeah, it was great, but it was worth it. Um, <laughs> just one of those things you learn, right? but this is why you always go out in pairs. You never go out by yourself, but um, no, uh, we love it. I've got a fancy front bumper. I can't remember the brand right now, but I've got fuel rims that are black and blue yeah. and I'm running with 33s and a two and a half inch lift in my Jeep right now. Right. Yeah, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous looking Jeep. And of course, I love the Thank front you. decal, Mother Ducker. Mother Ducker. And then I even have my English Mastiff and a decal on the hood for him. Yes, Ollie. Yep. Yes, love, love Ollie. And so you've got this, obviously, this whole off road community you mentioned a second mm-hmm. ago, you know, that, um, you know, you don't have to go out and off-road alone. So you've got this whole community behind yep. Duck Duck Jeep. It's this whole movement. Allison, let's talk about that movement. Share some stories, share some fond memories that you've had within this Duck Duck Jeep community. Okay. Um, I've been fortunate to meet a lot of amazing people and yeah. make friends with many of them. Um, some of our admin actually came from a trip last year, uh, Carolyn who I've mentioned before, um, yeah. she and her husband actually saved my butt um, last year. I was driving from Alabama to Ontario and hit a blizzard right. and Louisville, Kentucky. And I drove at 20 miles an hour all the way to Bran, Ohio, where they live. Okay. And it took me over 36 hours to get all the way to Ontario that trip because yeah. the storms were so bad. Right, right. I was so tired when I hit Carolyn and Jay's, my hands wouldn't uncurl off the street. <laughs> <laughs> we had to break four inches of ice off my front end. I lost the use of my headlights mm-hmm. twice where we had right. to stop, where I had to stop and break the ice off. Carolyn and Jay, I didn't know them at all, texted me or through Facebook and said, hey, mm-hmm. you know, we're grandparents. We have, you know, an extra bedroom if you need it, snacks, whatever you need. Please yeah. stop, you know, yeah. you don't have to worry. We're, we're nice people and i i was like okay you know what it can't be any more crazy than what i'm already doing so sure. i stopped and they are the most amazing people i've been fortunate enough to meet um they sent me out on my way with snacks and drinks and things to make sure i got all the way home and a promise to call them when i got here so they knew i got here safe <laughs> Um, I had a family in Guelph, Ontario, reach out to me right after we started this, like that fall. They lost the mom of the family to cancer and they were thanking me for giving them more time and more memories with her because she had a blast ducking Jeeps while she was still well enough to do so. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a humbling moment for me because I felt like I did so little, but it's touched so many. we have a jeeper in Detroit, Michigan. She's fighting terminal cancer as well. And um, she thanked me for restoring her faith in humanity, right. which was also so humbling. We have, you know, Jeep friends all over the U.S. I've been fortunate enough to meet some of the heads of bands on Jeep Heritage Festival. Um, Santos right. introduced me to a lot of wonderful people when we were out in Daytona uh, and Clearwater Beach. Right. It's opened the door in so many ways. I actually got to meet Will Wesley, one of mm-hmm. the bands that plays at Invasion, yep. through Duck Duck Jeep. He got right. he was at an event and they were ducking Jeeps. And he posted a picture of the duck he was given. So I reached out and said, hey, he invited me down to Baton Rouge, Louisiana to listen to them play, which was pretty cool. Right. Um, and thankfully, I have family there. So yeah. <laughs> I had a place to stay. But. <laughs> You know, Allison, and we talk about this more in the article. I'll, I'll leave a link below mm-hmm. our full article on Duck Duck Jeep, our exclusive interview with Allison Parliament, the mother ducker, the founder of Duck Duck Jeep. But Allison, one thing you told me when we were doing the interview for the article, and you mentioned it earlier here when we were talking, is that you wanted to create a safe space, right? You want a Duck Duck Jeep to be a safe space. So it really doesn't matter what kind of Jeep you drive, whether you have a new one, whether you have an old one, you know, it doesn't matter what type of ducks you use. You wanted to create a safe space. So let's talk about that a little bit. Why was it important that you wanted to have a safe space for this community? Last year and the year before, especially 2020, at the beginning of all this, it felt like the world was on fire. Yeah, yeah. Everything was kind of falling apart and people were hating each other openly for stupid reasons. For sure. At mm-hmm. least in my opinion. <laughs> and yeah. the world needed something kind. It needed to take a step back and remember we are all people. 
no matter where we're from, what we look like, or what we drive. Yeah. And the Ducks did that in our community. It opened a door to where a renegade driver, Wrangler driver, Compass driver, Liberty, Liberty driver, or Gladiator driver could sit and chat because A, they're driving a vehicle that's branded by the same company, but B, they were sharing something as simple as a smile. Right. And that was so needed. Like, I've seen families ripped apart by political stuff. I've seen friends not speaking to each other for the same reason. And that's why we made sure that there's no politics or religion or anything that could, you know, rip people apart on the page. It's also why we kept our page exclusively as an international group because we didn't want to say Duck Duck Jeep Canada is only for Canadians and right. you know Duck Duck Jeep you know Ohio is for only Ohio. Right. We wanted to bring everybody together not only to see the ducks that are being passed around but to see each other as people. Right. And, you know, we will leave a link below to all of your uh, social media channels uh, and encourage anybody who's watching who's not already a member to, to join and, and be part of, of Duck Duck Jeep. And again, Allison, you've had just incredible growth. So big, big reach all across the globe, but a small grassroots organization. So it's just you and a few other people, I believe Carolyn and Jay as well. So tell us just kind of about the organization internally. Um, I have an amazing set of friends that help me moderate and um, work on the page. Taylor, um, Carolyn, Jay, one of our buddies, he goes by Slowpoke, and I'll use his regular name because his Jeep's name is Slowpoke. Love it. Um, my friend Leary Santos, and um, my mom is a part of this, and yes. so is my brother, actually, one, okay. like, one of my brothers. Right. Devin and mom actually have gone out and bought Wranglers because you know, I have one, so they had to be cool too. <laughs> yeah, but... right. Look at what you started. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's always wanted a Wrangler in her defense. I will give her that. They actually had one when my little brother was in the university in right. high school right. and they sold it. And then I bought mine and mom's like, but I want one. <laughs> and when we started all this, she was ducking from a Honda Civic and hey, she hey, literally, <laughs> she literally made a decal for her Civic that said my Civic identifies as a Jeep. Nice. So my, my dad broke down and bought her a yep. um, Wrangler last fall, and it's a Gecko Green Rubicon. So yep. she goes to some events, and her plate actually reads Duck Duck. Nice. So you, you'll know who she is if you see her out and about, because it's lime green, like it burns your eyeballs green. <laughs> <laughs> but she loves it, and it makes her happy, and that's the best thing. And we will probably see her out and about before too long because the Duck Duck Jeep Invasion for 2022 is coming up. You had an incredible yep. event last year, uh, this year, uh, even bigger yet. You've got more mm -hmm. stuff planned. So tell us about Duck Duck Jeep Invasion 2022. Um, we have a lot of amazing things with this. We're doing a glow ride where we have glow sticks marking our trail. So if you're brave enough to go out in the dark, you can mm -hmm. give that trail a run got a blindfold obstacle course where the driver is blindfolded and their spotter is telling them how and where to go. Yep. Um, so that's going to be interesting because I'm probably going to be the lead trying this and hopefully I don't run over my spotter. He'll get a little angry. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's a lot of amazing things. We've got the Will Wesley band coming and mm -hmm. our headliner is going to be Scotty Austin from Saving Abel. Yeah. He yeah, it's great was music. amazing to partner with us on mm -hmm. that. Um, he's a phenomenal human being as well. Yep. And then Stony Lonesome, the badge of honor trail system for Jeep in Coleman, Alabama is um, hosting for us. They're actually giving us the space to set up and have fun. Uh, we had such a wonderful crowd last year. They invited us back and said, Hey, what can we do to join? Yep. Yep. So they're going to be working with us to help us make this a bigger and better event. And we're really, really excited about that. Yeah. Again, going to leave all of the links below to all the Duck Duck Jeep social media uh, channels and then to our article as well on Autumn Blog, our official interview with Allison Parliament, the founder of Duck Duck Jeep. Allison, before we wrap up, just one last question here. Uh, obviously, again, this blew up. You didn't expect it. It's only continued to grow and continued to gain more followers and the community is getting larger. So where do you think or where would you like it to be in the next, say, five to 10 years? What goals do you have? 
Um, well, we have ducking for teachers where we help educators get supplies for the classroom. Um, right. We had put that on hold last year while we were doing some fine paperwork and print to make sure everything was right and following mm. specific rules. But um, we're gearing up to get that up and going in a bigger, better way to help more people now. And I'm hoping they keep maintaining that because helping educators is a big thing in my world. I'm in a family of five generations of teachers. Okay, yeah. And um, educators, especially in the States, pay for a lot of their supplies in their classroom out of pocket. And teachers don't make a whole lot. So any way we can help, I want to. The other thing is I want people to keep spreading kindness and, you know, having fun with this because... If you saw the TikTok videos and the reactions of people that find their ducks, people jump up and down and scream. They're so excited to find their ducks. Yeah. Um, heck, people that notice me sometimes will do the same. Right. When they realize right. who I am and I've just tried to disappear the other way very quietly because I'm <laughs> super shy. Um, <laughs> but I really, really hope because a lot of people are already calling this a Jeep tradition and mm-hmm. Jeep life that this stays and continues to do good in our community. You know, Allison, obviously, when I met you and, you know, wrote the article and, and had interviewed you, you know, it's like, you know, you and I just got to be friends. We just really yeah. hit it off. And that is what is so neat about the Duck Duck Jeep community is like, you know, you, you come in and, and, and you, you meet you or you meet other people in the community. And you've done a really good job making it a safe space. And, you know, I I know you say you're shy, but I I would never know it from the (laughs) moment that we first met and and I first did that interview for for that article. And and now here we are doing another interview. So there's been a lot of growth and getting over being shy, but there, I still have my moments. Like I can give you a funny story real quick. Um, Last year we were out Christmas shopping and I ran into a store to buy um, socks and underwear because it was freezing up here. It's a lot colder in Ontario than it is in Alabama. And I didn't have heavy, thick socks. And this lady, as I'm looking through, you know, underwear shirts, looking at me, I'm like, oh no, not here. Please not here. (laughs) And I hear, oh my God, it's you. I'm like, oh no. Oh no. So I just put everything down very yeah. quietly and I'm yeah. about to step away. And she's like, you're the duck lady. And of course, <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, how, how are you? And yeah. I'm trying to, you know, get into the, okay, I, I'm here. I got to do it. Right. And right. I was like, yeah, it's nice to meet you. We went through the whole thing and she was bouncing up and down and she's taking pictures. And of course there's, you know, frilly lazy underwear in one section of the store. There's, you know, everything else. It's, it was crazy. So well, that's it fantastic. Was one of those things where you learn to adjust and people get excited because, you know, they're so happy to have something that's a lot of fun to do. Right. And want to reiterate this again for anybody who may be watching that's not part of the community. There is no wrong way to do it. It's just about having kindness in your heart. It doesn't matter what Jeep you drive. It doesn't matter what ducks you use, whether you have a fancy one or just a basic yellow rubber duck. All that matters is that you have kindness in your heart. Exactly. And that's the biggest thing. Allison, we want to thank you uh, for your time from all of us here at Automa Blog. We want to wish Duck Duck Jeep uh, the best of luck going forward. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me and I appreciate you. And again, we will leave below a link to our article, our exclusive interview with Allison Parliament, the mother ducker, the founder of Duck Duck Jeep. We'll also leave links to all of the official Duck Duck Jeep social media channels. But we'll look forward to reading your comments and thank you in advance for liking this video and subscribing to our Automobile Blog YouTube channel. And you can also follow us on Twitter for your daily dose of automotive medicine at Automobile Blog. In Detroit with Allison Parliament, the mother ducker and the founder of Duck Duck Cheap, I'm Carl Anthony.